I'd like to welcome everyone to the webinar series of the Cybersecurity and Information Systems Information Analysis Center, CSIAC. Today's presentation is entitled, Highly Secured Blockchain Technology for Strategic Supply Chain Management. My name is Steve Warzala. I am the CSIAC Outreach Manager. A few administrative notes before we begin. Uh, first, all phones have been muted, except for the presenters. The questions may be asked at any time during the presentation by utilizing the chat function. And time permitting, your questions will be answered at the end of the session. Today's briefing slides will be posted on Techopedia within a couple days. And finally, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge and thank our sponsor, the Defense Technical Information Center, DTIC. The funding that DTIC provides enables CSIAC to conduct these webinars. My pleasure to introduce our presenter for today's webinar, Dr. Bertrand Cambo. Dr. Cambo is a full tenured professor at Northern Arizona University. Bertrand is a principal investigator of research programs funded by the Air Force Research Lab and the Navy in Ternary Cryptography, the Use of Nanotechnologies for Cybersecurity, Post-Quantum Cryptography, and Highly Secured Blockchain Technology. He is also a co-PI of research programs funded by the National Science Foundation, as well as industry. Sambo is a senior member of the National Academy of Inventors, who has 80 granted or pending patents. He previously served as a senior executive in Silicon Valley at Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, the president of GemPlus Software, developing hardware security, and he also worked at Motorola, where he was recognized as a distinguished innovator. I will now turn the presentation over to Dr. Cambo. Good afternoon, Bertrand. The floor is now yours. Good afternoon, Steve. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, first, starting with the questions, can you hear me well? You sound good, yes. That is good. Okay. Uh, well, this kind of uh, topic is, uh, uh, is, is, uh, is extremely technical and could be unpleasant for, you know, generalists, which means in my presentations, I'm trying to explain the significance uh, without necessarily going into too much detail, um, if there is any, you know, any any uh, anyone that want to know more, they can they can contact me separately. We'll be happy to do so. Any part of the presentation is over technical. Don't give up. <laughs> I will. Uh, it's not the intentions to do uh, to do uh, uh, too complex presentations. The the title first. Um, the 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 supply the supply chain management that I have in mind is uh, essentially highly secure, um, and I'm talking about here an environment where you know let us say you want to have you know strategic uh, you know uh, element uh, for the national security to be manufactured, uh, you you don't want to have um, essentially the counterfeit. Uh, you don't want to have essentially breaches where you get, you know, bad part. And here we are essentially going to use the so-called blockchain technology to to provide security for for this environment. Um, <clears throat> and uh, which means we are going to assume I was I was repeating here that the entire um, uh, supply are going to interact freely on the cloud. But the question here is to be sure that those only are the supplier that we want, which means um, I'm going to essentially go to the to the following. Um, at first, I'm going to discuss what blockchain technology means and how is it applicable for smart manufacturing, general information. And then I'm going to um, uh, present the type of work we have been doing with uh, the Department of Defense and uh, uh, under the, um, the the sponsorship of uh, the Air Force Research Lab in uh, uh, information technology, and then more recently the Office of Naval Research. 
And that is essentially talking about a technology called addressable ternary puff, uh, some cryptography, and then we did some some validations and talking about future plans. Um, the essentially the we have to give credit uh, to um, Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin uh, essentially the the, the founder. Uh, who used uh, the name Nakamoto, that's not his name, uh, did a paper in 2008 on how to create a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And um, a lot of weakness on that technology that we're going to also uh, describe that was the first time that uh, the use of, of blockchain technology was introduced. And um, <clears throat> essentially the technology behind blockchain uh, there, there are three pieces. Um, the, 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 the first piece is, is, is what's called an ash pointer or the ash technology. And <clears throat> what that means here is every time you have a transaction, um, in this case, a financial transactions, you create essentially a method, a, a, a non-alterable public ledger that is going to contain those chains that, that cannot be changed after the fact. And that is really cool because, uh, you know, you get the full transparency and there is nothing you can essentially change after the fact. Uh, the second the technology that has been included here is the use of digital signature. And the digital signature allow <clears throat> the um, emitter of the blockchain to be recognized in such a way that there is a concept of non-repudiations, mean that you know who sent it and the, the sender cannot deny, oh, I never agreed to do that type of things. And then there is a third area of security, uh, which is essentially some kind of a, a, a virtual trust mechanism where Essentially, playing by the rules is a cheaper way to participate. Um, and uh, essentially, the blockchain introduced a mining, introduced, you know, all type of, of method here to, to create this kind of a virtual entity without a bank. Um, now, uh, to go to uh, explain a little bit more, uh, the next slide is essentially explaining what the Nash function is. The Nash function sees is you, you have um, a message, uh, X in this particular slide. And the message can be as long as you want, can be a book, can be a file, can be a picture. You're going to get the binary representations of that. And then you hash it. And then you get 256 bit out of it. And that's it. The way it is done here is if you know the 256 bit, you don't know which message it is. Uh, on the contrary, if you know the message and you know the hash functions, you can verify then the Y, which is the result of the, the hashing, is, is the correct one. Uh, now, uh, the, the Y uh, is sometimes called message digest. Now, one of the cool things on that one here is let us say you take a book and you change one point on your on your book, then you get a 256 bit totally different. Now, the number of possibilities here are. Uh, um, yes? yes. Can you can you hear me? Yep, you, you're okay. Okay. Yeah. The 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 beauty of that technology is uh, the number of possibilities which is two exponent, the uh, 256, is bigger than the, the number of electrons in the, in, in the universe, uh, which in the likelihood that you are going to create two messages with the same result is so low that so far, if you look at the, 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 the hash function that has been using for the blockchain, never ever you had a case of a, what we call a collision, will be two messages creating the same 256. And that is essentially what we are using here for the blockchain. Uh, you essentially have a transaction, and 
the representations to the 256 bit is unique. Now, 256 bit is relatively small and, and can be handled by any type of computer system. Now, this is the hash. Now, the blockchain essentially is giving you a chain of event, which means you have, let us say, an initial information, data one, and the data one is going to be done at a given time with a random number that you use to protect it. That's called a nonce. And then you ask that. You get 256 bit. And then you do it again, and then you ask it again, and then and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, when you get the ash number three, you have the full history <clears throat> um, and with, with, with total non alterability, which means if you essentially get on the supply chain, you know, a, a chain of events to build your, uh, your device, you know, it could be a plane, it could be whatever here, you are going to be able to have the entire history and then nobody can do an alteration after the fact. That's uh, now. I'm not going to go to the detail here. There are some Merkle tree roots, a lot of information here that we can ignore. What we have to remember here is the blockchain is actually a way to remember a chain of event without being able to change it. Now, the the next technology here that uh, is relevant for these conversations is called a digital signature. Now, the digital signature is each member operating is going to have a pair of keys and uh, with this pair of keys you are going to use a private key to do what's called a signature and the way to verify it is to use the public key and what as you can see on the cartoon here the 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 transmitter alice is going to write a text is going to ash it this is what HDM is, and then sign it with her private key. And the private key is such that nobody knows it. It's totally secret. When Bob received it, he's going to be able to use the public key of Alice and then verify is it correct or not. Now, the reason this is a cool technology here is because Bob is going to know that this is coming from Alice. And that's what is, is good because essentially you have a chain of supplier. You are going to have your sub sending you information and you know that it's coming from the sub. And that, that, I said that, that technology here is, is called digital signature algorithm or also DSA. Uh, now, two major difficulties here. The first is how do you distribute those public private keys? Um, and, and, and the problem would be like, if somebody is intercepting it, then they can claim to be Alice. That is one issue. Then the second issue is Alice could be a malicious entity. She could be the opponent. She could be part of the mafia organized crime. How Bob is going to know that Alice is a legitimate person. That is one issue. The second issue is the DSA, uh, as they are currently used for uh, cryptocurrency, are vulnerable to quantum computer. Now, that is not necessarily an issue for public, you know, because the quantum computer are not available and, you know, for now it's still fine, but for, you know, the government, uh, doing the manufacturing of strategic asset, um, we cannot afford to uh, the the risk that down the road the, the quantum computer are going to be uh, available to uh, foreign entities. Um, and that is, that is the second problem, which means that in this entire technology here, this is, is cool on paper, but you can also create a sense of false um, security. Right now, if you look at uh, Bitcoin, is used for money laundry, is used by really bad people. And then we, when you interact in that environment, you, you don't really know who you are talking to, which means that 
even though the blockchain technology is beautiful, the way to identify the users is a work. And now, what you have in the next slide is the way the system works, which means each user has a public key that's available and going to create a blockchain that everybody has access to. Now, um, if we go back to the um, applications of that, the application of the blockchain, if we can fix the security, is just amazing. You can use it for banks, you can use it for, for government, you can use it for personal healthcare, multimedia transportation, what I'm going to focus here on the logistic here. Now, let's switch now to smart manufacturing. Now, in the, in the area of smart manufacturing, we're going to have authorities distributing the key. And each supplier is going to have their own key. Um, and I'm going to fast here. But the, if we look at the stack of security, the ash pointer is great. The Mercury, like I say, this blockchain technology and the non-alterable public ledger is an awesome technology. Nobody has been able to break it. Quantum computer will not break it. This is really awesome. The second, like I was, uh, second bullet is not. And this is the focus of essentially my presentations. And this is the focus of the work that we have been doing with the Air Force and the Navy how to essentially bring to a layer of security to this peer-to-peer -peer message uh, that is going to be acceptable uh, to, uh, uh, to, 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 to be able to use the technology for uh, following uh, uh, smart manufacturing. Now, the third piece here, which is a trust mechanism, very, very important if you want to have a virtual bank, it's really not a priority here for this kind of application. Um, you know, if you want to really control your supply chain, do you want to create an environment where uh, you're going to have like an happy family of users deciding among themselves who is valid or not? Which means we are going to, that's a cactus an interesting technology. I'm not making it as, as, as non applicable, but my focus here is to essentially how can we improve the digital signature, and uh, that that is essentially the and 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 then we arrive to the the architecture here uh, that I'm going to to spend the the next uh, you know 20 minutes or so to explain. The the idea here is that we are going to have uh, we're going to give each supplier. Um, essentially a wallet of key generator and this is essentially called physically unconnable function. Now, to make it practical, um, you know, for the member of the government, you have, you have a smart card, a card that you are using to log in on your computer. Now, this is working the same way. When it's part of your card, you are going to have one of those paths, one of those physically incunable functions. And the path has an infinite amount of possible keys and each of them has an address. Which means the idea here is each supplier in the architecture that we developed has such um, a smart card or a smart chip that they essentially stick into their um, their um, uh, a PC or tablet or whatever, we assume here that the security of the PC is not used, that all the security is really on the path. We developed essentially um, a software that allows to create a new key for each uh, blockchain, for each transaction, which means that the supplier number, number A is going to have a key one for transactions one, a key two for transaction three, two, and so on and so forth. All of the keys are going to be posted on the on the public ledger uh, as valid public key in such a way that uh, in, in this environment here, 
you can have you the, can have the, the peer to peer to peer uh, direct, uh, communi direct communication uh, sending each other um, you know blockchains and they can actually verify the public ledger that um, uh, the key is valid and we developed essentially a software that's called the TAP PKI, which I described briefly, which is essentially allowed to have one key per blockchain. Uh, we essentially are incorporating a DSA with a path for post-quantum cryptographic DSA. And we're also using a, a you know, very high uh, powerful computer, uh, high performance computing that we can use for um, for key verification. Now, there's a lot of technology packed here. I'm going to go very quickly. Um, again, like I say in my introductions, you know, I don't want to discourage the people that are not versed into technology, and we can discuss that offline for the one that have interest. Um, the, the objective of the effort that we did is summarized. Um, compare with, let's just say, the Bitcoin type of of securities where you have open message, peer-to-peer -peer communications, peer validations, 10 or fast messages. Um, the, 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 the old style you know, blockchain type has a problem for the, the digital signature, does not restrict membership. You can have um, bad people signing in. Uh, protect the private key. Uh, we have a new key for each blockchain, and we have essentially the posting of all of that, which means that the scheme that we developed allow the use of the blockchain technology as currently used and add the protections that is required for strategic operations. <clears throat> now, I'm going to cruise on the technology. Um, what are those physical and cognitive functions? Well, those are essentially when you are looking at your device right now, you are using microelectronic components. And when you essentially have those components, they have a fingerprint that's unique. And with, 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 with billions and billions of, of, of data that's unique to each element. So we are taking advantage of that uh, to create those keys. Now, of course, the technology has their own challenges. Uh, you know, those, those, those physical elements can age, can, 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 can essentially create problems. And we had to essentially resolve all the problems uh, for the implementations that we are talking about. Um, now, this protocol here, again, the, the non-technical people don't lose sleep here, but the idea here is to have an handshake where the client device and the, the certificate authority going to exchange an address and then at that address they find the key and there are again an infinite or semi-infinite amount of, of possible keys uh, then um, you know we are essentially working on all type of path technology with the, the government right now uh, the work that I'm presenting right now is by using commercially available um, uh, component uh, and, and we are currently working on research uh, on, on temporary resistant ones uh, that are, are not available for these discussions right now. Uh, now, if I go look at the, what we do with it, um, the way the, the key exchange essentially is working is quite straightforward. You are going to have this handshake, you create a key, and with that key you can encrypt and you can decrypt. And and there is a, you know, when you go to the bottom of the slide, you see how you move uh, by using this, this system. Um, now, this is the decade of the security. I'm going to skip it, but we're using, you know, multi-factoring. There is a lot of information which, what has to be remembered here is the handshake is assuming to be non-secure and that's, you know, anybody can steal the information. And we, we have essentially layer of security that essentially are going to point at keys. And we are using, in this case, ternary uh, state, which are, you know, binary zero and one ternary. We had a, a third state, which are more complicated than binary uh, to, uh, to handle. Uh, you know, this entire protocol has been developed in, in Rome 
and and uh, in, in my lab uh, together in the last uh, essentially three years. Um, the you know one of the one of the issues that you have, that you in, have this in, this in this technology technology is is sometimes the puff can have an error, and we essentially in this case if the key is not the same on both sides the cryptography is not working. Which means that the, the 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 traditional way of doing it is to have some kind of a correcting mechanism. It's called error corrections, where you use helper. Now this kind of technology we don't like because at the client level you need to have some kind of an error correcting scheme, which take power time and can be you know broken by the enemy. Which means that we developed our own methodology. And the methodology is such that rather than um, correcting the key, we developed a search engine at the server level to find the key. And in this case, the system is working as in this slide, which means that you have the handshake, the key of the puff is slightly different than the key to the server. But with a search engine, we can find the key uh, and then and then and then that work. Now, uh, the the for for blockchain technology, the architecture that we are talking about is we're going to have the handshake. We're going to essentially create the private key, and then the 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 search engine is going to find the public key and announce it on the ledger when actually the digital signature is going to be also used for the client. This is essentially, uh, you know, this entire story here will require a long step-by-step -step to go to the coding and all of that, which I, I don't want to do here. Um, but, uh, and this is more on the search. I'm going to skip that. This is over technical here. But um, one of the, um, uh, 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 and I'm going to, to move that. Okay. One of the, uh, one of the ideas here uh, that we developed and we proved is, is validity. The entire protocol that I described is going to work on any, any computer for the server. But the idea here that if you inject noise at the client level, then the search is much more complicated, takes more time. And then the, the point is, is by using a high a performance computing, high performance computer, there is a way to actually find the the key when actually when you don't have a, a high power computer, you cannot. Now, why is it is it relevant for the applications that we're talking about? Uh, if if it turns out that let us say we have a client device that we know that is operating into a safe environment, then there is no need to use these features. But into an experiment, we essentially can make the cost of breaking it higher because only opponent with HPC plus the cryptography will be able to break it. And here we are just uh, having a possibility to make the protections even higher by by this, this high performing computing. And again, I, uh, I I have here the bottom line here uh, that. Uh, in, in, and we essentially proved that in, in, in the work that we did, because at, at the university we have our own HPC. The HPC we have has 2,500 uh, uh, computer connected, uh, and we were able to demonstrate at uh, you know when we inject noise that we can actually find the verified key in about a second. When actually, if you don't have an HPC, uh, you uh, you need 1.4 days, which is essentially out of reach. So in this case, what we do, we put a gating of, let us say, five seconds, and if after five seconds we cannot find the key, then we assume that this is this is a bad a bad client device. But this is just a part of the protections. And I'm going to skip the technical detail here. Uh, and talk about post-quantum cryptography, which means the, what I've been explaining so far is 
how we can um, use the blockchain technology, which is essentially offering non-alternable ledger, how we can use all key exchange to create a new key uh, at every blockchain and, and be sure that the set of users are valid. The now, the remaining questions, the rem the remaining questions here is, um, you know, the, the, the traditional way of, of, of doing those DSA, those digital signature, are quantum computing resistance. And I just want to uh, summarize in this one slide the, the effort that is currently going on. NIST, the National Institute of Science and Technology, um, working with NSA, has been starting a so-called post-quantum cryptographic project. And the project started in January 2016, uh, 69 submissions of way to fix it. And then this last year, in January, uh, last year, 26 of them has been accepted. And the objective for NIST is uh, within, you know, two, three years to make officially available uh, um, the, the ways to be, to be, you know, to, to, to have a DSA that is, that is quantum computing resistance. Now, to make it clear, those methods protect us from quantum computer but we don't need quantum computer. We can actually use existing computing power to be able to, to do that. Which means, uh, if I look at the, uh, the family, there are multiple type of encryptions. And one of them is the digital signature. And right now, out of the 26, nine are um, essentially uh, under considerations. And with my research team, we are currently studying several of them in anticipation because we don't want to wait to have NIST because all of those code are available online. You can actually download it, play with it, and incorporate that, which means that right now, uh, you know, in my laboratories, I proved the protocol that we described so far by using, you know, commercially available uh, DSAs. And, and some of the work that I'm currently doing with my student is to replace those commercially available components by uh, those new methods. Uh, of course, uh, my first uh, report on that is extremely encouraging. It seems that the entire ternary cryptography that we developed is compatible with those, those methods, uh, but the, the research work is ongoing as we speak. Now, um, how did we, uh, where are we on the system here? Uh, and uh, this is a prototype that uh, has been developed by my student, uh, where uh, we are essentially using a tablet, which is non-secure. And in this tablet, we enter a message. In this case, it's final growth list letter carried. Now, this sentence means nothing because it's being generated with random numbers. <laughs> and the, uh, we have essentially, if you can see the circuitry that is attached, this is where we have our physically encoded functions. But the letter A is where we have a commercially available component. Uh, there are two uh, um, uh, communications uh, devices, a Bluetooth. One of them is communicating with the certificate authority, and the other one is uh, communicating with the other. Uh, then uh, the step two uh, is to get the key with the handshake, and with the key, uh, calculate with the, the private key, calculate the, 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 the signature, uh, calculate, uh, you know, we have the hash, the signature, the key, uh, then the last step, we send that information to the receiving party, and the receiving party receive all the information and check the validity. Which means the questions to ask, the research questions to ask is, if you want to get the key at every transaction, is it going to slow down the system? We understand for the reason this is actually good. Uh, which means in this system, we demonstrated that we can, after we type the message, 
we do the key exchange, we do the hashing, we do the digital signature, we send it, we verify it. The entire chain takes less than one second. This is essentially what we are right now, and we are extremely pleased to the first result, which means there is absolutely no user disadvantage to user system, which means that now the implementation here, the big circuitry here, is going to be replaced by a you know a, a smart card or any type of tool that is essentially going to be stick into your device. The tablet is non secure, uh, and uh, the, uh, there is detail here of the circuitry. We have to do all of that. This is a detail of the screen. Uh, the bottom line here is the technology behind the project we developed include. The TAP PKI, you know, that's being kind of uh, software that we develop with Air Force, uh, the development of, of a path, the development of the search engine, all of that has been developed the previous years. And this year, we had to implement all of that into a Wi-Fi, which is essentially a microcontroller. We do the communications. We have to have the entire protocol and uh, the DSA. And, uh, you know, as being a, a, quite of a, a complicated program, but uh, we're pleased to say that this entire proof of system is available. Uh, last uh, summary of, uh, of the talk before we open for questions. Um, first of all, what is promising in all of that? Well, it, is, it is now very encouraging to see that we can provide an efficient authentication for the digital signature uh, by using, you know, a one-time key pair generations for each blockchain and to verify all those public, public sheets by the series. And that technology is extremely fast. We also proved that the usage of an HPC, it, it's called HPC here on the slide, that should read HPC with a P, uh, is, 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 is totally... Uh, totally applicable here to further protect this kind of environment. The future work, uh, we essentially are looking at uh, testing several post-quantum computing methods, uh, and uh, and obviously to to add uh, additional peer-to-peer -peer features uh, on the system. And with that say, I think I am reaching my. Uh, the end of my presentations, and I will uh, take advantage of the, the the next 15 minutes or so to take questions. Hey, thanks, uh, thanks for the presentation, Bertrand. Uh, very, very interesting uh, work that you're conducting there. Um, so, if anybody in our audience has any questions for Bertrand, just you know, uh, hit us up in the uh, chat window, and we'll uh, we'll run them by Bertrand. So. Um, so I, I guess one, you know, one, one thing I just I want to clarify. I, I think I uh, understood it, but I, when, when you're talking about your post quantum cryptography, um, uh, there what you were what you're referring to is trying to prevent the um, keys from being cracked or or stolen by by the use of quantum computers. Is is did I, did exactly. I get the, you see, let, 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 exactly. This is this is this is excellent question here. Uh, the 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 way the protocol is working is you have those private keys that nobody knows, right? And then from there, you generate the public key, and the code used to move from a private key to the public key that we are currently using is such that traditional computer need about hundred centuries to crack it. Hundred centuries which means it's extremely safe. Now, if you think about the methods where you can crack, which means that you find the private key by knowing the public key, then the entire system is broken. And it has been said that quantum computer, and uh, there is a, a Dr. Shaw, uh, almost like 15 years ago, 20 years ago, actually developed the methods proving that quantum computer, because they have this entanglement, they can actually break it in few seconds, few seconds, which means right now you hear about uh, uh, Google and Microsoft and uh, you know Intel, they all IBM, they all develop quantum computer. You know right now 
they can actually develop quantum computer with about 100 um, uh, elements uh, or, or qubit. Uh, but uh, every year or two, they double that which means if you just look at, okay, a year from now, they're going to be able to do 200 and so on. If one day they reach, let's just say, 1,000 or 2,000, that's it. The entire, uh, the entire cryptography as we know is going to be destroyed, which means who knows what the foreign country are currently doing? Who knows? We have all indications to believe that Chinese, uh, Russians, uh, and so on and so forth, Europeans, are making great advances in quantum computer, which means, you know, eventually everybody using cryptocurrency is going to be hacked. You know, everybody, everybody, using, uh, everybody using credit card is going to get hacked. I mean, this is a really, really serious threat, and which means uh, it, it is urgent uh, to essentially develop those, those methods that are not going to be broken by quantum computer. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, I, I think that's what we've been, you know, seeing coming down the road with this quant, like, like you said, with the quantum. Once once that does become available, then all this, you know, existing <laughs> encryption stuff is just, you know, it's 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 going to be, you know, they can they can crack it in, you know, in seconds. So exactly. you know, nothing will be safe and secure anymore. So uh, so right. if you and can, then to you start know, with the blockchain. To start with, will be the blockchain. Okay, <laughs> the blockchain technology will be the first one to be destroyed, as well as as, as secure mail. You know, and this is not. Yep. Uh, that, that's why you know when we are talking about using it for strategic, you know, asset management supply chain, this is not an issue that is uh, that is uh, unimportant. <laughs> oh, oh no, uh, yeah. I mean, in this. Uh... You know, I think the you know the application of the uh, blockchain technology to try to secure the supply chain is is critical. I mean, because um, you know if you if you're not certain where these parts, where these devices, these components are coming from, or if they've you know not you know been tampered with, you know if somebody's been able to uh, you know insert something on there that can you know it's going to be with backdoors that's going to be transmitting information to, you know, our, our adversaries, you know, that's a, uh, you know, that's a, that's a big, big problem. I, I mean, you, you know, you can just see in the, in the news these days, you know, just the basic, you know, we're talking about some of the, you know, 5G technology and some of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, commercial vendors from, you know, overseas, uh, you know, our, our, you know, some of our allies are not kind of moving in the same direction that we're, uh, you know, heading so that that's, well, that's going to be causing some issues. The, the two the two pieces, like I was articulating, you see the, the 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 other issues you have is currently the keys. What do you do with your private key? Your private key is sitting on your computer, is sitting there, can be lost. Every time you use it, you can actually find out what key you use. Which means, you know, assuming that you you said, I mean, assuming that you have the quantum computing is one of the issues. But the other issues is is definitely the protection of the key. With the method that we're offering here, we use a different key for each blockchain. Which means if you steal a key during a particular exchange, the next one is not going to be used anymore. And this is essentially why we get into that technology, where we essentially eliminate the risk uh, the risk associated. Uh, with uh, essentially the storing uh, keys that can, you know, that can be stolen, and that's another big issue. Uh, now, of course, the other big issue here is, uh, you know, how do you prevent bad player to 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 play? Uh, and that that again, you know, what our research work has been focusing, you know, to have all of those things uh, together. So it's a, it's a big task. I see yeah, we have a set yeah. of questions here for him. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so you know, one one individual, uh, you know, is uh, you know asking if you have some uh, uh, research papers uh, that that you could recommend to help them, you know, get a better, uh, you know, overview, uh, you know, understanding of your, uh, you know, of your of your research. 
Yeah, the, um, uh, one of the things that uh, is we we have a we have a website, and that's uh, in dot nau dot edu slash cybersecurity. And in this, uh, we posted uh, essentially the the the, the paper uh, and uh, and patent uh, that are you know we we have about. Uh, you know, in the last three or four years, we kind of published like 20, 28 paper, and uh, we filed 40, 40 patent uh, for some of the work. This is totally documented online, uh, which means that you, you, you use this, this website, uh, again, uh, in.nau.edu slash cybersecurity, and, uh, and then in there you have publications, and then you get the list and then each of those papers have their own set of references that you can use. Okay, great, great. Thank you for uh, thank you for the pointer to that. Uh, thank you for the pointer to that information. Um, yeah, John has uh, typed type that into the chat window, so folks, uh, you know, folks can uh, have that there to uh, access. Uh, let's see. I heard you mention. I see a question uh, here to heard about. Uh, uh, essentially, help me generating a new key for each transaction and a new key for each blockchain. Uh, and we can actually, because of key generations, uh, essentially the, the 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 measurements we did on our key generations is takes takes about ten milliseconds altogether. Which means we can use it for every every transaction, every blockchain, every <laughs> every time we want. And uh, and then there is a way to track the, the one-time use of it. That that essentially what's cool in our technology because we have essentially like a wallet of keys with a physical element where we point to a different address, giving us a different key every time. And uh, and that's why the protocol, at least we demonstrated, is is is, uh, is changing key of every every blockchain and transactions. At that essentially what and I think this is uh, very important because uh, you you eliminate a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of attacks by doing that now we yeah we yeah. also have uh, we also have another uh, interesting uh, you know protections that we included is by using alternary cryptography we are actually protecting what called men in the middle uh, attack which means you know the the attack that we worry here is to have you know the enemy uh having their own fake uh certificate authority and communicating with a client device and pretending to be to be to be legitimate where with our system they are going to have a tough time to do that because of the ternary uh and and just by you know by communicating with our device the key are going to be bad Unless they know the ternary code, and that is a very important protection for the for the scheme we think, which are you know excited or or partner because uh, you know the the the, the men of the middle you know pretending to be legitimate is a, is a very serious threat uh, of you know this kind of environment. Yeah, and and, and it seems uh, you know. You know, by employing that uh, ternary uh, approach, you know that that should should have uh, you know a significant impact on on their ability to uh, you know to get in there and you know uh, you know t t attack exactly. it in that fashion. So yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. We, what we yeah. don't want to see because we use an handshake is we don't want to have an enemy creating fake handshake and fake key, you know, that, that's what we don't want. And the ternary is essentially such that if you randomly create an handshake, the likelihood that the handshake is going to work is, is, is one over, you know, several billions, you know, <laughs> which means uh, essentially zero. Uh, and that that's very, very important for, for this kind of application. We have to be paranoid, as you know, in security, but we also have to be humble. <laughs> and to assume that the enemy is very, very smart, and that we have to try to patch up protection here, which is essentially what we are doing in this work. Yeah. Right. Right. No, I think the uh, yeah, I, I, I think this is uh, some incredible you know research you know that you've been uh, 
you know, been working on. And, um, you know, I, I think it's got some uh, tremendous potential for, you know, to, to make some, you know, big improvements and, and help increase the, uh, you know, the, you know, security of our, of our system. So I, you know, I thank you for, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the, the work you're doing. It's, uh, you know, it's very, very critical and, you know, very, very important at this, uh, you know, at this, at this juncture. So. Thank you very much. And, you know, I have a, I have an email address here and, uh, you know, any, 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 uh, interest uh, would be happy to, uh, you know, to give, uh, you know, to discuss it in, in more detail. I understand the difficulty of getting through all of that in a in a 40 minute speak speech. <laughs> yes, I, I yeah, I know you've been, yeah you've been doing some pretty intense research and, and yeah and, and 40 45 minutes is hard to really dive deep into into that. So yeah, folks have uh, you know for Bertrand, he's got his email up there. If you want to reach out to him, you're welcome to do that. Um, you know, if you have any questions for us, uh, you know, you can always send uh, questions, inquiries to us at info at csiac.org. Uh, you know, we're happy to uh, help and uh, interface and uh, assist in any way we can. So, uh, I once again, I'd just like to, you know, thank you, Bertrand, for taking the time to share this uh, important work with us.